Hi, welcome to the channel. This is going to be difficult. I hope I don't screw this one up. Uh, so here is my 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. It's got the 4 liter. Uh, from the factory it came with the upcountry package which included the, uh, the tow hooks, some skid plates, and um, one inch more of ground clearance than a, than a typical four-wheel drive Grand Cherokee. So right after I bought it, uh, my intention, of course, was to go off-roading. Here in the, the Northern California area, we have these great Sierra Nevada mountains that uh, are uh, just an awesome playground for off-roading, whether it's rock crawling or finding mud holes or snow. So what I've done here is I've thrown a two-inch rough country budget boost at it, the spacer lift. And um, it came with spacers, and it came with new shock absorbers. So you can get it with or without the shock absorbers. In the front, there's the spacer, and there's the shock absorber. Now, I will say this. Um, I really like the way these Rough Country shock absorbers feel when you're driving on the road and off-road. They are very plush. So I'm kind of a fan. So I, I spent a little extra money to get the kit with the absorbers. So in the back, the spacer is down there, right there, and of course Rough Country shock absorbers. In the back, um, you get rid of one of the spring isolators, the lower one, and set the spring right on the spacer. And that kind of gives you a really level ride. It almost looks a little front high, because we're so used to seeing these things with a rake. So if you wanted to retain that little isolator spacer, you'd probably get the back up, I don't know, just under half an inch more so you'd restore your rake. I've already thrown them out, so it's too late for me. Now I had a problem. When I put this thing together, uh, I had a problem out on the trail. My first foray out with this lift, I had the spring on the passenger side, believe it or not, pop out. Okay, I was full flexed. I had disconnected my sway bars. My rear one's gone, my front one's got disconnects. And uh, I hit a really flexy object and that spring popped right out. Now that's a nightmare on the trail, an absolute nightmare. The good news is one of my good buddies, Josh, was there, and he saw it happen, and he walked me through the process of putting it right back in, and so we were, we, were, we were good. But the problem, when you disconnect your sway bar with this two inch rough country budget boost, the shock absorbers are way too long. I don't feel like rough country has appropriately matched this shock absorber to budget boost kit, because you shouldn't lose a spring with a two inch budget boost. Uh, when I when I pulled the shock absorbers and, and compared them side by side to the stockers, these shock absorbers allow four inches more travel. I feel like all you would need is an extra two inches of travel to accommodate that lift. Well, shock absorbers are too long, sway bar is disconnected, you lose a spring. Dangerous. Terrible. So, what do I do? I had to get some limiting straps. Let's see if we can spot those limiting strap right here right flexible pro cop this one's an 11 and a half you can see I mounted it there that's where the uh, oh, steering box mount I can't remember what that bolt is and then uh, the other mount is right down here as part of the disconnectable sway bar link kit which I'll get to probably in a different video I don't want to convolute this one too much <coughs> So no, spring doesn't pop out anymore. That limiting strap basically allows the suspension to drop just to the point where we start seeing a little gap here. And that's it. No more spring pop outs. And I'll tell you, I put this thing to the paces yesterday. I beat it and I had no problems. I had plenty of ground clearance, plenty of traction. So I like the lift, but um, beware, man. You might lose a spring if you're really pushing it. So bear that in mind. Maybe with stock length shocks, you won't have that problem. Here's the other thing I had after the lift. I had a hard death wobble. Um, you know, I think that's a different video. So have a look at this. And if you want, uh, a couple videos ago, I posted this Jeep in complete stock trim when I bought it. You can do that for the comparison, uh, for ride height comparison. But that's all for now. Stay tuned and thanks for watching.